The 6 Series Grand Turismo is a bit of an odd fish, a luxury German hatch with few rivals. Maybe the Audi A7 Sportback, or Mercedes CLS shooting brake? Not quite it has a different set of priorities than they do. Mind you, it not as odd as the car it replaces. The old one was called the 5 Series Grand Turismo. BMW remains a trifle embarrassed about building a common person hatchback, so it positions the GT as a luxury five-door coupe. And as a coupe it now qualifies for an even number in BMW naming strategy. It an enormously fine thing to ride around in. The wheelbase matches that of a 7 Series, and the seats are mounted slightly higher off the floor. The net result is lounge legroom in the back. Meanwhile, because the dash and the interior fittings and materials are pretty much the same as the forthcoming generation of 6 Series Grand Coupe that the lower, sleeker 5-door, they e really very nicely done. The whole place has an aura of craftsmanship and expense. Then behind the seats you e got a chasm of a boot, with hatchback versatility thrown in. Even with the seats up, the 610-liter boot will gulp down four 46-inch golf bags, whatever they are, without a burp. But admission critical that the car looks more sleek than the porky, frumpy old 5 GT. The extra length helps the looks, if not the parking at over 5 meters now. Also the tail is a significant 6 centimeters less high off the ground than before, so to help arrow they're now a raising boot spoiler. The tail lights have three dimensional covers to subliminally remove bulk. It works. Up to a point. This is still a car that carries bulk. Bulky or not, it been engineered to drive like a BMW. It lost a nice round 150 kilograms over the old 5 Series GT, despite the fact it longer. How? Because they ditched the silly and heavy split tailgate thing, and the odd folding internal partition between cabin and boot. They also used very large aluminum castings for the hatchback frame, and for the main longitudinal members in the rear floor. Almost the whole skin is aluminum, and some of the body structure in the door frames. Unlike the closely related 7 Series, there are no carbon fiber on the structure. It too expensive and hard to make for a car that sells more cheaply than a 7. Note the sunroof option adds a lot more weight than simply its glass panels, frame and motor, to match the no sunroof car body rigidity, the sunroof version even gets extra stiffening in the floor. It a simple powered train lineup in the UK. The 630i is a four-cylinder petrol with a familiar 258 bhp 2.0 liter engine. The rest are six cylinders, the 340 bhp 640i, and 265 bhp 630d diesel. BMW X Drive all-wheel drive system is standard on the 640i optional on the 630D and absent on the 630i. All have 8-speed autos. The UK biggest seller will be the RWD 630D and M Sport trim. Air suspension on the rear is standard, but other chassis options proliferate beyond that. Too much choice? That only the start of it. When BMW has renewed the 6, X5 and X6 ranges, you'll be able to get big BMW 5-door 4WDs in the following body styles, listed here in order of height. Deep Breath 6 Series Grand Coupe, 5 Series Touring, 6 Series Grand Turismo, X6, X5 and X7. They L all ride on the same platform with similar arrays of technologies and powertrains. Can imagine your local dealer will have a demo car of each. It remarkably refined and isolating. A brilliant thing for passengers, and for drivers too, on a long long haul or a dreary commute. But it not going to light up a smile behind the wheel on an interesting road. Even though it L tackle difficult and twisty sections at big speed, it just not that engaging. The test car had the full Christmas tree. Powered by the top N40i engine which comes with all-wheel drive, it added a 300 package of four-wheel steering, adaptive damping, air suspension at each end, and G could drive adaptive anti-roll. The combination is extremely capable. It steers progressively and has enormous traction and composure. The adaptive suspension control of body movements is disciplined and yet graceful. It feels analog not digital. You can work out what element of the system is responsible for what characteristic, but you know they work fluently together. Some active chassis get themselves so stiff during hard cornering that when a mid-bend bump arrives, they strike it with a crash. Not this one. 
It always seems to have something in reserve. So you e quick and confident and secure. But the steering has little feedback and the throttle has scant influence on the feel of the car through a bend, either. Just when you want to have a bit of fun with the GT, it turns its face against you and goes coy and aloof. Maybe the 630i, with a smaller engine and two-wheel drive and a lot less weight, would ease the issue. But as we write this we haven't had a taste of one. The 630i 6.3 seconds 0 62 mph time looks quick enough. When you give the 640i 6 cylinder turbo engine a pasting, it does more to warm your heart. Its sound is muted going gently but the noise is deliciously charismatic as it revs and shoves you in the back. BMW published 0 62 mph time of 5.3 seconds is entirely believable. But actually there no need to go to the 7000 rpm's red line as the best work is done as it passes one notch below that. There are plenty of torque over a big swing off the dial, little lag and a transmission that's smooth and alert under full or part load. The full option chassis can certainly adapt itself to a huge range of demands. Its control through corners DOES and compromise the ride, which is nicely cushioned across urban potholes and broken fast roads. On motorways and A roads, the steering has a well-defined movement off center and helpful weighting so it's easy to hold your lane. Which renders the available lane keeping assist system more or less superfluous. Tire noise is low too. The door glass is frameless, and at German speed you do get a rustle of wind noise, but on UK motorways it is and going to be much bother. Lounging around in the 6 Series Grand Turismo makes you feel pretty good about yourself. Whether you eat in the front or back seats, you eat got space and lush comfort, the seats padded and shaped like body gloves. Electric front seats are standard, and optional extra comfort chairs adjust in a galaxy of extra directions. A back seat option pack gives you rear entertainment screens, electric backrest adjustment which DOES and actually adjust very far in heated back seats. In a car that prioritizes its rear passenger so generously, this pack DOES and seem like overkill. Ahead of the driver, the dash has familiar sections from the 5 and 7 Series, but fresh shapes too. Woods, leathers and metallics looks and feel like items of quality and craft. The instruments are synthetic graphic impersonations of real clocks, but well enough done that you think they are real. So what the point? Well, they do allow a certain flexibility of layout but in the end it seems like wasted effort. BMW has also gone a bit overboard on control inputs for the iDrive system. You can use the twist push nudge controller as usual. Or you can write letters and pinch zoom by caressing its top surface with your fingers. Or you can use the main screen as a touch screen. Or they're always voice input if you don't mind talking to your car. Or finally the ridiculous and flaky gesture control system. Why is making a silly circular motion in the air more convenient or less distracting than turning the volume knob? We have the answer, AISN. But don't let that distract you from the fact this is a superbly designed and relatively easily learned way to use the immense number of car functions. The traffic aware sound app is excellent. The communication apps are harder to fathom and clunky to connect, and often unreliable and crash prone. BMW Portal will now mine your diary for events, program them into your nav and remind you by phone or smartwatch when to leave home. It'll even predict where you e going this week by seeing where you went in the past. BMW accepts or it just with 1,500 of these intervention, UK, which is slightly better than the best year for the old 5 GT. Turn it off. Not a car you but saw very often. You paid for its so the 6 GT should stay relatively rare and they e not forcing the market too much. With luck, that L keep the residuals up and hence leasing rates down. Also, it got a lot of standard kit. Professional navigation, LED headlights, metallic paint, 20 GB hard drive, all-round park sensors and a reversing camera. It seems mean a BMW to ask 35 for CarPlay but pretty much all the Apple functions are replicated by the native BMW systems, so you can probably manage without. Leather is standard but the fansly stitch soft stuff in the photos is 75, and the gotcha is BMW lets you order it only if you also have the super adjustable front seats, another 705. Other big options include the excellent and comprehensive head-up display at 95. The stereo comes in four steps, the standard one, then levels branded BMW, Harman Kardon or Bowers and Wilkins. For company car users, the 6 GT model sit in tax bands between 26% 630D and 36% 640iX Drive M Sport. The gap shows why the diesel will be the most popular, though 28% for the 630i looks good given it has a lower retail price than the diesel. Interestingly, if you equip the diesel with optional X Drive, its CO2 rises above that of the RWD 630i Petro. Just saying this car is an outfish IS and really enough. You want a verdict? Well, this is an easy car to admire. It answers all the rational questions that an SUV answers other than harumphing around off-road while being more comfortable, refined and better dynamically in pretty well every way. But it a hard car to love. It not just a slightly unengaging driving experience. It the look. The designers have done a great job given the proportions they had to work with, by using interesting details and surfacing. But the depth of the body side still sucks away any chance of verve. Still, if you want a versatile family car and have very tall kids, there are a few better ways than this to coddle them in space and luxury.